to see us. I hope you have the best day. Lots of news to cover. Let's jump right into it. After his recent attacks on the city of Baltimore and Reverend Al Sharpton, President Trump is having to defend himself from charges of racism. And in front of the White House earlier today, he made this bold claim. I am the least racist person there is anywhere in the world. You know what that is? <laughs> that is the least believable statement there is anywhere in the world. It's anywhere in the world. Just right, let's t take a look. Throw Trump out of the equation, right? And think about that statement. If you saw that on a billboard for a real estate agent, <laughs> if you said, I'm the least racist person anywhere in the world, <laughs> The first thought you're going to have is that real estate agent is definitely racist. <laughs> Trump isn't even the least racist person on that lawn. <laughs> Although he's slightly less racist than this chipmunk wearing a Kid Rock t-shirt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> on the other side of the political aisle, the Democratic Party held another one of their half debates tonight. There are so many Democrats running for president, they had to split the field into two separate debates. In other words, tonight there was a debate to find out which people from this debate could eventually move on to debate the people in the other debate <laughs> to see who gets to go to the final presidential debate, which will be the only one anyone will actually care about. <laughs> Tonight's field had 10 candidates, including Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Beto O'Rourke, and John Hickenlooper. And the candidates were really stumped by the first question, which was, who is John Hickenlooper? <laughs> now, the biggest thing people were tuning in for tonight was to see how Arizona Congresswoman Deborah Stallings would fare in this debate. Now, I just made that person up, and the fact that you didn't know that... <laughs> Proves my point about these debates. <laughs> Moving on, this is a troubling statistic. According to a new study, 28% of food delivery drivers have eaten from a uh... customer's order. <laughs> yeah, like you wouldn't. <laughs> That's shocking, though, is it? 28% of drivers have admitted to eating a customer's food, which means that 72% have lied about eating <laughs> a customer's food. Now, I used to be a waiter in a pizza restaurant in High Wycombe, and, full disclosure, I went one further than this. I used to eat people's food on the way to their tables. <laughs> Honestly, I did. I'm not joking, right? So I worked at this place called Bella Pasta, right? Everyone did it. <laughs> so they put the pizzas up on the pass, and, like, the restaurant, one arm was looking. If there was, like, a bit of cheese or something hanging over the top, you'd just eat it and then, like, go over. <laughs> And uh, so one time I did this and I was taking these pizzas over to the table. It's completely true. And I went over and I was like, ah, oh, here's your quattro formaggi and your whatever the other one. <laughs> and I put them on the table and the whole table went like this. <laughs> and I realised there was a string of cheese from the pizza... <laughs> ...to my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> on my... <laughs> <laughs> so I just went like this. <laughs> I'm gonna get you another one. Of these. <laughs> uh, this is an odd story we saw. A man in Colorado was recently pulled over for a broken tail light, but the officer let him go without a ticket after seeing that he cleverly replaced the tail light with a bottle of red sports drink. Here it is. Here, look at that. <laughs> I don't think that's how electrolytes work. <laughs> Even more impressive, after replacing the taillight with a sports drink, the man's car scored 30 points in a high school basketball game. <laughs> now, the officer let him off because the man said he was going to get the light fixed, and this was nice. When he finally did get it fixed to celebrate the victory, all the mechanics came out and dumped a big tub of taillights on his head. <laughs> <laughs> finally... 
In Florida recently, a professional surfer was bitten by a shark, and even though he had several bite marks on his arm, instead of going to the hospital, the man went directly to a bar. Yeah. <laughs> And that is a pro move. You just never know what beers the hospital is going to have on tap. <laughs> Be awkward if he went to the bar and the shark was in there too, drowning his sorrows. Like, <laughs> he was right there in my mouth, man. I, <laughs> I don't know how he got away. <laughs> the guy was pretty clever. Rather than go to a hospital, he just replaced his arm with an old bottle of sports drink. <laughs>